Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Loot Masters and we got another Production Basics tutorial. This is kind of like a part two to the last video I did in this series where I showed you how to make this pitched up riser using just the simple delay inside of Ableton Live. So if you wanna learn how to do that, go ahead and check out that last video. And today we're gonna to continue with this project by making an explosion using the kick from the kick loop. All right, so I'm sure you've heard those in sample packs and stuff like that, but it's way better to do it yourself because you have full control over the sound design. Uh, you're not limited to the sound that's there. We're creating it. We can completely manipulate it and bend it to our will. So I'm going to show you how to do that inside of here. And I'm going to give you some tips along the way to make sure that everything sounds good and you're not messing up your stereo image, you know, and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial. And by the way, all the samples and sounds you hear inside of this project are taken from Dub Techno 2 by Artisan Audio. They're a brand new label over on loopmasters.com. So I'm gonna leave a link in the video description if you like this flavor of music. Definitely go check them out. If you don't, you know, stick around for the tutorial because you can use this inside of any type of genre. So the first thing we need to do is just grab a kick from the project. And the reason why, you know, I'm using the synth here for this buildup and I'm using the kick down here for the explosion is it just adds cohesion to the project. If you're just taking a random explosion or a random buildup, you know, that works quite often, but it doesn't always sound the best. And if you can learn those tips and techniques to produce those sounds yourself, then you can use elements of your project to create those and they'll just sound like they belong there a little bit more than if they didn't. So the first thing I want to do is split the frequencies here again, because the kick has some low content, subby content, and some higher edge content. And I want to affect those differently. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but here's the sound. As you can see down here in the spectrum, there's a lot of low frequency content here. So what I want to do, and we did this before in the multi-band compression tutorial for Production Basics. So again, just check out the playlist here on Loop Masters if you missed that one too. But I'm gonna duplicate that band. So I've got the EQ8 on one channel, and then I have, or one chain, and then I have the, another EQ8 on the second chain. So I wanna turn off these, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a high pass. And for this one, I'm gonna turn off those other ones. And the reason why I turn these off is because they eat up CPU whether or not they're actually tweaked. So if they're on, they're using CPU, and there's no reason to have them on if we're not using them. So I turn them off. It's just like best practices, I guess. So for this filter, I want to right-click here and map to macro one. Down here, I want to do the same thing with the frequency here. And now I have a split band rack. So I've got two bands. I've got a band for the low end and a band for the high end, and I can control the frequency crossover point by this macro knob. So if I just come in, and you know, let's just do 70 just to be safe. Subby is gonna be anything like 60 hertz and below, so I like to push it up to 70. Um, I would obviously wanna be auditioning the kick to make sure it doesn't, you know, um, I'm not cutting off too much so I could solo that low band. And in fact, let's rename, control R to rename and just type low, uh, and then come over here and rename and just type high. And now I have that and let's just, yeah. So even up a little bit further to like 127 is still giving me nothing but that low content. And that's the higher end, but I'm gonna go ahead and drop it back down. Let's go ahead back to around 70. I want a little bit of that beef kickness to be uh, a kind of shot out in the explosion. So that's why I'm gonna put it there, but we can always come back and tweak it. And again, this is you know the brilliance of sound design and making your own sounds is you can always go back and tweak what needs to be tweaked to make sure it's perfect. So. Again, 70, boom. And the first thing I wanna deal with is the low end. And if you don't know, and I'm guessing you are new to production if you're inside of the production basics tutorial, is lower to sub bass frequencies should be mono as always. Just, it should always be mono. And that includes your reverb and stuff. So we're gonna be adding reverb to this low end. And if I come in, where is the reverb here? I'm just gonna be using live's reverb. Very cool. Uh, I'm gonna turn the high quality on just to make sure we're good. I'm gonna turn the input processing off so it's completely the same. I'm gonna put it at 50%. And the reason why I'm gonna do this is called parallel processing because I want the original sound to be just as apparent in the mix as the affected sound. That way I'm not losing any of that punch. So 50% is where it's at. And if we listen now, we're not really getting a lot. So I'm gonna take this decay time, turn it way up. 
Oh yeah, and it might be difficult to hear if you're using, um, if you're on your laptop or your cell phone, and you don't have nice headphones on or your nice studio monitors. But there is a lot of reverb there. But the issue right now is it's not mono, but that's easy to fix, right? Just take the utility here and put it at the end of the reverb, and click the mono button. And if you see the output here, it's mono. Both of those sides, the left and the right, are exactly the same. And you want to put it at the end of the chain, by the way. If you put it in front, the reverb will actually create stereo field. See how they're different there? We definitely don't want that. We want that over here. Very cool. We can even turn it up a little bit more. And again, we're going to leave it there because we can always come back and tweak it later. So the next thing I'm going to do is come into the higher band and solo that. And again, I'm going to take uh, the reverb. Let's go ahead and just take that same reverb. I'm going to control C here, come over here and just click after the reverb. You see how this line is here. I can control V now and paste a new instance of the reverb for that as well. And that's perfect because I want that 50% here. I want the decay time to be relatively the same. We could probably turn it up a little bit more if we wanted to. And I'm going to leave everything else the same. That's cool. Um, so that's you know, pretty much it. We've got an explosion. If I go ahead and let both chains happen at the same time now, we've got a pretty decent explosion there. If we listen to it in the context of the track, so it's just adding that extra bit of explosion there when the drop happens or the breakdown happens rather. There's one other thing I want to show you, and that is using the glue compressor to make it a little bit bigger. And this time I'm going to drop it outside of the rack. So if you see here, this is my chain, and here's the end of the rack, and this is outside of the rack now. So if I actually come over here and um, put the rack down, you'll see that this is outside the rack, and that's what we want. And what I want to do is leave the attack on one, and I want to leave the attack on six, and I would take the ratio and put it up to 10, and I want to pull down the threshold and listen to how much beefier this is going to be now. Pull it down a little bit more. So that's with the compressor. And if we want a little bit more of the punch in the beginning, just pull up the attack time. Let's pull up the release too, so it, it kind of hangs on to it. And the last thing we need to do is just pull up the makeup gain. And that way, because you can hear it's getting kind of softer and it might make you think, oh my gosh, that actually sounds worse. No, pull up that makeup gain. Listen to that. That. You hear how much beefier it makes it, how much bigger it makes it. You can put it on soft clipping just to give it a little bit more saturation. Very, very cool. And that's the basics of it. Now, it doesn't stop there. The fun does not stop there. If we want to actually, speaking of saturation, drop the saturator on here, we can even get some nice clipping going on. Um, let's come into uh, soft sign. So that's adding a lot. Let's, uh, let's try. <laughs> Listen to that one. So that's a true explosion. It depends on how you know crazy you want to go, but drop the saturator on there and there you go. So that sounds pretty good, but the next thing I want to do is jump in here again to this effects rack, come over here to the high. And now between the EQ8 and the reverb, we can drop other effects to make things more crazy. One of my favorites to mess around with is the grain delay. If you come in here to Borg, drop that right here. You see how it's completely transformed the sound? We got a completely different explosion there. So listen to that. We've got so many different types of explosions already, and all we had to do was drop that Borg in there. Uh, obviously, we can start playing around with the time. And 
Is that not incredible? So what I would do probably if I was gonna really flush out this rack for consumption later on is I might map some of these macro, uh, some of these parameters to the macro knobs. I'd probably rewrap it with the saturator and the glue compressor here and I'd make it nice eight knob rack where I could really tweak out the sound without having to dive into it. I'm not gonna do that here. I think that's probably for a more advanced tutorial when we get into mapping uh, the macro knobs and talking about uh, maximum and minimum values and stuff. So we'll get into that later on in this video series, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to get some really incredible results for explosions uh, just using one element of your track. So obviously we need to audition that with the track to see if it fits. It probably won't. It just sounds really cool, but let's see what happens. So it's probably too loud, so I could come in here to uh, the compressor, roll back on the makeup gain. I can come in here to this Borg. I don't think that really works, but. Again, that one probably works in that <laughs> effect. I'd probably have to uh, freeze and flatten that if I was really working inside of here, so I apologize for it uh, floating over the top of me speaking sometimes. I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, just putting a couple of effects on here is gonna give you some really great results. And again, if we wanna go back into the more kind of open thing, we can just turn this Borg off and just get our kind of standard impact right there. Sounds super dope and it's gonna be cohesive with the track because we're using an element from it. So let's just one more time listen. Go ahead and unsolo. And that's it. So anyway, that's some more production basics for you. I know we got into some more uh, kind of intermediate slash advanced stuff with the rack building, but I mean, this stuff's really important. And as long as you follow along, you're, it's a video, so you can pause and go back and do it again. Just get in and don't be afraid to get in and experiment because things might go crazy sometimes, but every now and then you're gonna figure something out, remember it, and always be able to use it in the future. Anyway, I'm Joshua Casper here for Loopmasters. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.